This is a discussion about the pelvic floor or the Kegel muscles. Now, you may ask yourself, well, why am I talking about it? And it's one of those things that I didn't even know about it until I started getting analyzed with this system many years ago. Uh, it turns out it was my biggest dysfunction. So I learned that I really wasn't able to fire a lot of muscles, let's say glutes, adductors, hip flexors, core, without getting assistance from my pelvic floor or my Kegel muscles. And this is a common association that we find in a lot of people, especially the people who have failed a lot of traditional therapies. Uh, it's because they're using muscle cheats and they don't even know that they're using those muscle cheats. And again, unless we tell them that they shouldn't be doing it, they'd still probably continue to do it. Uh, in fact, a lot of times women who have given birth are told by their OBGYNs that they're supposed to Kegel as much as, uh, as, much as possible, constantly. And although I agree with them that they should be Kegeling constantly, they should be Kegeling without any other muscles. And when they think about Kegeling constantly, they may think about Kegeling while they get up out of a chair, while they're chopping vegetables, while they're brushing their teeth. Uh, and that's not really what you're supposed to do. If you do want to practice Kegeling, practice Kegeling by itself, but don't let there be any other muscle contraction that happens along with the Kegel. So here's what happens. Here's one of the main reasons, uh, and there are a couple of interesting theories as to why it happens. So the theory of why Kegeling tends to become associated with other structures is from a book that I read called Pelvic Power. Uh, and they said that neurologically, children develop the control over that area at around the age of 24 months. Now, if a parent is trying to potty, chain, potty train their child prior to them developing neurological control over that area, then they're gonna say, hey, listen, you know, don't, we don't want you to have an accident. Try to hold it, try to hold it, try to hold it. Uh, and when they try to hold it often enough, they're gonna either squeeze their legs together, they're gonna squeeze their butt cheeks together, they're gonna do something, uh, so that way they don't have an accident. They wanna make their parents happy. Uh, and that may be where the first um, muscle association comes from. Now, that's not provable, it's just a theory. There's absolutely no way that it can be proved. I just thought it was interesting. I thought I'd share that with you. Uh, so that's the first discussion about pelvic floor uh, association. So here's the other thing that I see is that when we look at core, core is anything that increases the intra-abdominal pressure. Uh, that pushes back against your spine and that supports the most important structure in your body. So when you have, the transversus abdominis looks like a weight belt muscle. It literally does the best job of increasing your intra-abdominal pressure. When people don't have great control over that structure, what they typically do is they have a tendency to hold their breath. Now the diaphragm looks like a dome and when I inhale, my diaphragm contracts and it flattens and it pushes down. Negative pressure is created here, which air refills and positive pressure is in, uh, created inside the abdomen. Uh, what that does is it gives you a pseudo core because that pushes back against your spine. Now the pelvic floor is like a little mini diaphragm as well. When you contract that, it lifts up and it increases your intra-abdominal pressure as well. So there's three things really, there's another one, but three things really that uh, increase the intra-abdominal pressure. So that's gonna be a diaphragm, core, transversus abdominis, and pelvic floor. So if you don't have good control over your transversus abdominis, you're gonna most likely be a breath holder and you're gonna be a Kegeler. So what do we do with our system? We're gonna to try to get you out of that habit. So if we find out that you cannot fire your core without Kegeling, we have to undo the process. Uh, if you can't fire your glutes without Kegeling, then we're gonna to have to undo that process. It takes a little while, but again, it was my biggest dysfunction. Uh, I couldn't walk one arm or one branch of the mall without having to sit down. Uh, and that was probably about five years ago. And since then I've been on an uptick and my hip continues to improve because now I know how to fire my glutes. Now I know how to fire my adductors and my pelvic floor is not as involved as it once was. So that's the Kegel discussion.